No, I, I can't see It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. <laughs> this is a show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me are the linguistic members of the Song Talk Radio action team. We have Phonetics Phil. I'm fantastic, I guess. Fantastic? Fantastic. It's not a recipe. And we have uh, Morphology <laughs> Mike. I don't even know what morphology means. Morphology refers okay. to the structure of language. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. If you're talking about, all, if you're talking about, all, sorry, you're talking about like <laughs> landforms, and it refers to the structure of landforms. It refers to the structure oh, of anything, really. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. it's a general structure of things. It's a general structure of things, uh, but in terms of linguistics, yeah. it's the structure of the language. So it has been used like that. All and that's right. all we have time for on the show today. Thank you for <laughs> listening. And a little bit of uh, word definitions. Um, uh, please send your comments and questions to Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Feedback at songtalk.ca for the good old-fashioned email, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit us at songtalk.ca to find out how you can be a guest. Tonight, it's all in the family. No guests. Uh, tonight, we're listening to songs in different languages. That is, not English. And uh, I, so I want to start asking you guys, as listeners, what do you get out of listening to songs where you don't really understand the words? Mike? Um, well, you definitely get more of the, the pure music feeling, like you get the vibe and you get caught up in it. And you still can get the passion of the, the singer. And I don't know, I, I grew up in an international port, so there's something I'm always curious to hear music from other places. Uh, years ago, I went to Jamaica and like I'm a big fan of reggae, but they also have like heavy metal reggae and this like that, all kinds of genres of music, but with a reggae beat or at least reggae influences. So, you know, we get very, um, you know, at least, you know, growing up, you got very little in the way of variety of music in, in some ways. So it's nice to know what exists outside there. Mm -hmm. I find it interesting yeah. how you can, you, you tend to focus on the melody in a kind of a different way, mm -hmm. because you're not really, you know, you're not distracted by the lyrics and distracted may not be the word, but it's, it's, you know, sometimes the words can, you know, can maybe pull you out of a song or, you, you know, kind of, you know, like parts of it. Um, whereas, um, uh, you, a song in another language, you just kind of hear the music. And so your relationship with that song is kind of different. Maybe mm -hmm. a bit more in the reptile part of your brain. Mm -hmm. um, so how about you, uh, Neil? Yeah, I, I think I think what you guys say is true. You you do tend to focus more on the, on the purity of the music in terms of, you know, melody, chord, and, and rhythm um, without... Yeah, without drawing any meaning from the meaning of the words, because you it may may or may not, you know, you figure if Kurazan is in there, then you know what it's about. <laughs> but aside from that, you know, um, but the, 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 the other thing I find interesting, too, is that depending on the the origin of the of the artist, where they come from, they tend to pull in a little bit of their own cultural um melody shapes or different instruments or things like that 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 granted english you know uh bands and things like that do as well when we when we mix together a little bit of persian or a little bit of indian or a little bit of african beats or something like that um you know but i think i think with with songs especially if they come from different countries you know that that gives you an opportunity to hear even even the music on the on the purest on the purest level in a different way than your you know typical Western tonalities, right? Yeah, I think Western music dominated the world in, mm -hmm. in charts around the world. It was it was difficult, except in smaller markets or in smaller ways, mm -hmm. for homegrown music or music from different other cultures to really get a foothold. So I guess as music got more widespread, there was a chance for more people to get in. And I don't know, it just seemed like, uh, it was about different things often. I mean, certain music was very political because of its nature. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so even what they were singing about, which you find out afterwards, yeah, yeah. Uh, was, was 
you know, part of it. Uh, so, um, yeah, I just, you know, I liked opening up my ears to all kinds of music. It's, it's really interesting. I was, um, you know, thinking about what songs to choose for tonight and I couldn't think of, I mean, there's kind of, you know, ones that I sort of loved my whole life and that was kind of one, but I was thinking about other ones. And in the last 10 minutes of us chatting, I have about five I want to play, which are, which are kind of modern and new. Oh. And one which I can't find out. And I've actually discovered a lot of these on YouTube. Okay. Um, because YouTube sort of suggests things in, in sort of a way that I... So I don't know how he came out. Well, actually, one of them is... Which I, I don't think I'll be playing because I don't know if I can find it. But it's um, a Korean band. And they did a, um, a collaboration with a Korean dance uh, crew. I think actually I sent you guys this link... And it's oh, also this, yeah, and another one of our theme shows. I think you pulled it out. Yeah, and it was like um, uh, uh, a commercial for a Korean uh, tournament, yeah. and I just love it mm -hmm. because uh, it's yeah. it's very much Korean. It's not like Korean people trying to sound like a rock band or you know uh, Korean people trying to sound like a blues band or anything. It's just like it's really it's very much a, a different kind of music, and I just love it. So one mm -hmm. of them is kind of like that, mm -hmm. but not Korean. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Should we get into it? We, yeah, we only have an hour. And we got yeah, yeah. Music, let's get into right? it. We'll just play a little bit of each of our selections and see how many rounds we can get through. And then, okay. obviously, we'll you know, like we did for our, our summer songs uh, last week, um, we'll put together a Spotify playlist uh, for our listeners to follow along mm -hmm. um, good, of good. all the songs, even if we don't play them tonight, all our picks, and uh, see where we go from there. So, um, Mike, you want to go first? What's your first pick? Uh, my first pick is an artist, uh, Julieta Venegas. She's actually from Long Beach, California, but she's Mexican heritage, and I think she she grew up in Tijuana. I'm not sure how I found her, uh, but every song that I found of hers was fantastic, and she's she's won tons of Latin Grammys and has put out a lot of records, uh, but not many people that I know know of her. So I thought, well, this would be a great opportunity to uh, you know expose her music to people who might not already uh, know about her. Does she sing in Spanish exclusively? She or sings Spanish? in Spanish, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exclusively. Ex exclusively. Okay. At least every song I've heard, she's singing in that. And she's had, you know, big hits, and, uh, but in a, in a particular market. Um, so um, this was off, I think, her second album, Benvenuto. And uh, the production is good. But what we were talking about earlier... I didn't know what she was singing about. Or I don't know what she's singing about, but she's a very passionate singer. And I just love the tone of her voice. And uh, she's been described as sort of like uh, alt, uh, alternate, alt Latin music. So it, it's very, some of it rocks out quite good. And uh, anyway, let's just take a listen to this. So Julia uh, Venegas, uh, Honor Quiero. Porque yo no tengo latido Nadie sabe, nadie llama Pero hoy estoy vacía Alguien entró y salió O oh, porque me encontraron muerta Y si otro vio ya ah, no está más Se ha esfumado Algo habrá sucedido oh, No han dicho pero ya he sido vendida y no sé cuál fue el precio y quién lo pagó It does, it does have a very indie vibe to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And it, it seems like there's a lot of words in that song. Yeah. I think we, we hadn't hit a chorus. It's a very economical one. Is, is there um, a chorus later? Does it happen later on or is that it? I think the chorus is that second musical change. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's a change as opposed to uh, a... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nifty. Yeah, now what was it about the song that uh, really attracted to you, uh, Michael? Um, I like the, the um, well, I like her voice, and uh, I went through a bunch of her songs that I liked, and I, I like this for the energy. I like the way uh, that guitar starts up, and they go, oh, that's pretty energetic, but it's not as energetic as it gets, because then after yeah. the first chorus, it kicks in it really kicks heavier in. again, and then once that's established, then they bring in kind of a, a bridge or an alternate melody on top of that. So it, it keeps layering and, and doesn't lose its intensity, which I like. And I find her voice very, I find her very passionate in that too. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay. All right. Well, I'll right, do my um, next. Yeah, go for it. Phil. Right. What's your first pick? So this is a band called Daka Braka. Um, and I think they're from um, Russia or somewhere around there. Um, let me just do a bit of... Um, Ukrainian Folk Quartet. Um, okay. And the thing, it's, again, this is a YouTube... Uh, Discovery, and uh, I think one of the things I love so much is the way uh, they have three female vocalists, and they do that very, it's a certain style of Ukrainian singing where it's kind of very close harmonies. Mm. Um, you know, not like just a third and a fifth. It's uh, it's a very unique sound. And um, yeah, I just came across this and, and thought it was fantastic and listened to all their stuff. And they're really, they're really interesting and um, the instrumentation is unusual and uh, they're really good. And this is from a live concert at Glastonbury. Oh. Um, hmm. This was posted on, in 2016, so I'm maybe around then. I don't know. Here it goes. Okay. Daka Braka, and the song's mm. called Yankee. I have no idea what it's about. Um, mm. Could be about stepping on Lego. I have no idea, but it's a great <laughs> song. I just love it. <laughs> and I've heard it. It's one of those songs I listen to a lot, and just every time it just gets you moving, and it's yeah, yeah. Um, and really interesting from a songwriting standpoint. Um, the main musical, or musical instrument um, is a cello. Mm -hmm. electrified cello and then there's mm -hmm. um 
uh, two who's played by a woman and uh, two other women who play drums and shakers and things. And then uh, the fellow who's sort of doing the lead there um, is playing a tambourine, but he also plays accordion sometimes. Mm. So the music is really interesting the way they take... I think what I assume to be fairly uh, uh, traditional Ukrainian and kind of modernizing it in a really cool way. Really, really mm -hmm. good stuff. Yeah, it, it does sound kind of folky and traditionally. It actually reminded me of like of like um, Aboriginal, like North American Aboriginal music oh, yeah. with, the, with the kind of hand drum sound and those tight harmonies. Yeah. <laughs> vocals, well, yeah. Um, yeah, made me think of, uh, well, uh, Lemon Bucket Orchestra. Uh, okay. uh, yes, yeah, a lot, and uh, Gogol Bar Gogol Bardello, uh, especially the guy's voice sounds mm. a bit like that too. Okay, but um, yeah, they're, they're kind of uh, punked up uh, folk music the way it, like yeah. the Pogues did with Irish music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These kind of bands are doing it with uh, Ukrainian and East European music, and and of course their uh, their stage attire is pretty awesome too. So, oh yeah, oh yes, and, yes, and and. Definitely encourage everyone to go to YouTube and check it out after the show. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but after the show. I know. I yeah, no. You're right on, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe, but also don't switch off until after this. Then, so. Yeah. But there will be a link in the show description. Stuff. Stuff, so yeah. You can check that out. Okay, good stuff. Um, okay, so um, my first pick, um, I had a friend uh, a, a while back, probably about 15 years ago, who... Um, immigrated to Canada from Mexico. And uh, he, we got to talking about music, of course. Uh, oh. He since has moved to uh, Montreal um, and now speaks French, English, and Spanish. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking about rock music and stuff. And he was like, there's this really popular band in, in, uh, in Mexico called Mana, M-A-N-A, -A, which, um, which I assume means like, like the Mana um, as in like a spiritual force or like the Gaia kind of, you know, earthly force or something, something spiritual like that. And then, um, and the song is called uh, Just Justica Tiria y Libertad, which translates as uh, justice, land and freedom. So I'm not sure if it's a protest song per se, but um, yeah, let's give it a spin. So it's, it's, got, it's, it's got a bit of the, it's got a bit of the, the kind of, you know, the rock music we know, but there's a bit of spin of Spanish Mexican kind of thing going on in music as well. Awesome. <laughs> There was a Corazon in there, so maybe it's a love song. <laughs> maybe. It's a heart. It's a heart. It's not love. It's heart. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Could be. When I heard that guitar, I thought immediately, like the, the tone is very much like Carlos Santana, mm. and I wonder if I thought um, the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I wonder if there's something about you know that uh, the music that you grow up with, you know, tends to sort of make you do that kind of phrasing, which is mm. so awesome because it was great, great guitar playing there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. There were the pan flutes in the background, which, yeah. you know, seemed, it seemed, there seemed to be a little kitchen sink, like everything was in this particular song. Oh, it all you know? in the, in the mix. 
Yeah. Yeah. The little flamenco yeah. type kind of guitar at the beginning. And yeah, 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 exactly. A little bit of everything. And then the yeah. harmonies are very uh, kind of Los Lobos, that kind of, mm -hmm. you know. So there's uh, a lot of familiar elements there, but mm -hmm. uh, a but still got that, still got that driving rock element in it as well, like mm -hmm. yeah, the yeah, and everything. So I don't know, it's a little, it is, it is a mishmash for sure. Yeah, <laughs> the approach to uh, the drums is really interesting as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just you know, it's not just one, two, three, four. To, you know, yeah. the backbeat, it does definitely mm -hmm. have a Spanish feel. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, boom, but a lot more syncopation. In it, yeah, 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 kind of that galloping rhythm. Mm -hmm. Way cool stuff. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michael. It's your second pick. My second pick is uh, uh, an Algerian uh, singer, a political uh, songwriter and, and very popular in that part of the world. Uh, born in Algeria, I grew up in France. His name is Rashid Taha. Um, and again, I came, ac I came across him. I was watching a movie and one of his songs is in the movie. And I go, what is that song? That's so cool. So I, I tracked it down. I actually bought the soundtrack just for that song. Mm. And uh, and then sort of went on a deep dive into more of his music. Uh, he's a very uh, uh, charismatic guy. So uh, his stage shows are, are quite quite cool. Um, he said he was inspired by The Clash uh, mm. and uh, ended up meeting them. And, and there's some kind of cross-pollination with Rock the Casbah. And there's actually a, a video uh, of him and Mick Jones from the class playing Rock the Casbah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, he's, he's got a, a really cool sound and, and he really, uh, and this song particularly, very heavy uh, instrumentation. Uh, it's called Barabara, Bara, which I think means outside, like, you know, people on the outside or, or street, you know, people like, you know, out, uh, outlaws or people who are, you know, uh, not part of the elite. Uh, so let's just uh, let's take a listen. Uh, but if you track down more of his stuff, Rashid Taha, a lot of his stuff is great. So cool. this is Bada Bada. The, the mix of instrumentation there. Yeah. And one of the things I like is uh, his, the accent is, it's not just that his accent is clear, but it forms the rhythm, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. rolled R that's mm -hmm. in Arabic and, yeah. and Eastern languages. So that's part of the rhythm of the, the verses. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I really cool. love about the, the rolling of those R's very, very East. And the whole, the yeah. whole, the whole thing is a very, very much a East meets West thing. Yeah, really. It, just, it doesn't, it doesn't have a approach. verse and chorus. It no. just keeps building and building and building, and so it's a different song structure too. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that is taken from a traditional song structure. I wonder. Yeah, yeah. That's a great. That's a great track. I'm definitely going to be listening mm -hmm. to uh, more of that. Um, yeah, Rashid Taha. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Let me check it out. This is where the having the. Uh, uh, this, this, the uh, look at the playlist from the show will come in handy. You can track yeah. down the artist and then more of their songs, absolutely. 
go down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. okay. So my um, Phil. right. So my my next choice is one of my favorite bands from uh, when I was a youngster. It's you know a band I fell in love with when I was. 16, 16, 17, something like that, and just love them ever since. And this is a song that always makes me feel happy. And I always heard it in German. There's an English version. Um, it's the German band called Kraftwerk. Mm. And um, yeah, there's just something so bright and happy and cheery and positive about the song. Um, and it's uh, the, the name of the song in English is Europe Endless. But in German, it's Europa in Loso. Um, now, I was going to play the whole song, but the problem is the song is 9 minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah. Uh, sometimes Kraftwerk mm. stuff is quite long. Mm. Um, so I'm going to pick it up in the middle, and hopefully we can hear a bit with the lyrics. I mean, there's not a lot of lyrics, but there is some. Okay, here we go. Okay. Is Kraftwerk actually from Germany, or are they? North they North are. North? They're from they Berlin. From uh, okay. This was done. Um, this was done seventy eight, I think. Yeah, sounds like. And that. Um, it was, of course, pre MIDI, so no MIDI stuff there. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, percussion is actually played by a person. Oh. Okay. Um, and um, for most of their albums, actually. All their music was played, their drums were actually played by a percussionist, Carl Bartos. Oh. Oh. And it's, they were always really funky. They loved going to discos and they'd play their stuff um, in discotheques. And uh, when they kind of got rid of Carl ba Bartos and just did, went to the machines, it lost a bit of the funk. But uh, mm. certainly those early albums, uh, Trans, -Europe Ex uh, Trans Europe Express, uh, Computer World, um, The Man Machine are definitely funky. Uh, surprisingly funky for all electronic music. And they were actually reasonably reasonably popular in North America too, weren't they? They've always mm -hmm. been. They're very influential. They're always kind of going. Uh, they're um, basically it was four guys in a bit. It was actually two guys, uh, uh, Ralph uh, Ralph Hutter and Florian Schneider, who mm. passed away, uh, which broke my heart because he's my hero. Mm. And uh, they had two uh, percussionists that they hired. And then the two percussionists eventually left, and then they had two other guys, and then Florian Schneider f uh, finally left, and now it's just Ralph Hutter oh. with some guys. And uh, oh. it's still worth seeing live, but uh, oh. it's not the way it was. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Did that uh, speed up, uh, or was that just a, a playback thing that I heard? Um, no, it does, it does speed up because it's all played by people. Mm. Right. Yeah, it was sort of interesting to hear something so seemingly robotic not be robotic. <laughs> well, they always tried to go organic. for robots, yeah. but it was always, there was a lot of organic stuff to it. And it's, mm. yeah, it's, 
Definitely, they don't re release a lot of records, but um, well worth a listen to just to hear the way they also approach melody in a very kind of kind of Germanic way in some ways. Mm. Okay, so, yeah, so well, that's my that's my uh, second one. Alrighty, um, I'm going to move on to something. Um, uh, I, I saw this artist at uh, Harborfront Center a number of years ago in, in Toronto, and they uh, were having a Taiwanese festival on. And there's this young guy sort of singing uh, alternative 90s style songs. And the name of the band is Johnny Hi-Fi. And I found out, I talked to him after after his thing and bought his, his CD at the time. And uh, it turns out he's... Uh, Taiwanese American from Los Angeles. And the interesting thing about his his album was that sure enough, they're sort of 90s alternative rock songs, electric guitar and everything. But he opted to sing, you know, maybe four or five of the songs on a, on a 10 track album in Cantonese. Cool. And Smart. and I think I think what he was trying to do basically was trying to, you know, get into the Asian market. And and I was looking on his website today, and sure enough, they've toured. You know, they're an American band, really, with a with a Taiwanese American lead singer and songwriter. And sure enough, they've they toured in China, they toured in in uh, in Korea and Taiwan, all those all those places. And, and mm. I'm sure the Cantonese songs are big hits over there, um, as well as the English ones. So uh, that's one of the things so. I like about this. This makes me think of it is when you sing in other languages or you hear people singing in other languages when it works like when it fits like the uh, Rashid Taha thing that the bra bra made it but uh, sometimes you feel like there's way too many words in it and mm, yeah. so you know uh, sometimes you hear music from yeah like the far east and they really work with the uh, the rhythm of the language and sometimes you hear artists that are in another language and, and they don't so I'd be interested to hear this because you know if he's been playing with American rock and then adjusts it for uh, it, it, yeah, I mean it's, it's very much a straight up the middle American, you know, mid nineties alternative rock song, but it's in Cantonese. <laughs> oh, cool! There's, aside from it being in Cantonese, there's nothing Cantonese or Eastern about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, Even that's the title, the title's "Looking Back," but the song's in Cantonese. So there you go. <laughs> all right. The first song we've had on the show in this episode so far, this got like verse chorus, like yeah. very straightforward verse chorus. Yeah, oh, it yeah. Uh, it's really interesting. Even the vocal style sounds, you know, very Western. I, I, mm -hmm. uh, any of our, uh, if any of our listeners speaks Cantonese, I'd like to know from them. Uh, are they bending the word? Is he bending the words in the wrong way? Or does it sound okay? Yeah. It's an interesting question. Yeah. Natu yeah. You know, because it sounds drawn out and slurred and accented in a very Western English sounding way. Yeah. 
If you hear his songs in English, they sound in many ways, at least to my ear, because I mean, because I don't know Cantonese, they sound much more natural in, in his, his English songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I'd ask about like, how do you fit the words in it fit perfectly, but yeah. I wonder if it's true to the rhythm of Cantonese. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, no, it'd be an interesting thing to know that, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, but it sounded great, you know, mm -hmm. um, but um very smart to try to get into that Asian market, I think. Yeah, yeah. I've even encouraged um, Addy uh, uh, Bay Shelter, um, the band I'm in, lead singer, because I, I know he speaks Hindi, um, you know, pretty fluently. I'm like, dude, you got to do a song in Hindi. Just yeah. do it, do it yeah. like a straight up, a regular Bay Shelter song. Just write the lyrics in Hindi. And he's like, but I can't be, I can't be poetic in Hindi. I can only be poetic in English. Like, Which is yeah. weird. Like, why? Now, why do you, because I've heard people say that, because I know we've had people come out um, to the, to our meetups and, mm -hmm. you know, they're obviously speaking English as a second language. And I'm always mm -hmm. wondering, why don't you write songs in your native language? And Well, the, the other thing with him is that English is his native language, technically. He grew up in, in Abu Dhabi, went, oh, to okay. India, went to India for boarding school. His family's from India, but he spoke English his whole life, really. So oh, okay, I right. think he learned Hindi like as a, as a teenager when he went to boarding school in, in India and then oh, in, right, in right. Canada. So it's, it's a little bit of a mix of this and that and the other. But, you know... I think he's, he's he started writing poetry when he was a teenager, and I think it was always I've always felt you know like he could express himself that way in in English rather than in in any other language. So mm. yeah, but yeah, we have had people at the meetup who uh, English is not their first language, and yeah. they still they want to write and sing in English. Yeah, and and we've had people remember who was that guy Daniel Caceres who came on our show way back when who was from Spain. And he oh, wrote yes. this song in English and said, and, and he was like, if I, if I sing in Spanish, I put too many words, too complex language, but I do it in English. Very, very extraordinarily simple. And it was really <laughs> it's a simple. language for dumbing things down. Yeah, it, it wasn't even dumbing it down. It was just extraordinarily simple and to the point. And it was like really yeah. nice. And I was like, this is interesting because well, it's, 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 it's like people say when they, you know, guitarists who play the piano and it's end up something kind of pure and simple that comes out or vice versa. And I think that's true. One of the problems with, I think, modern, well, with songwriting and recording or any creative process is the unlimited possibilities. And mm -hmm. because you have unlimited tools, it can be very hard to to honor the inspiration because you get distracted by the tools, you get distracted by the words. Mm -hmm. And by mm -hmm. maybe working in a language that is your second language, you don't have as many tools. Yeah. You don't have, so you're, it force, forces you to really pay attention to the purety of your inspiration, mm -hmm. which I thought is an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a limitation like could, any other, which is always a good place to be. That's true. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, I would do it if I could speak any other language than English, which I can't. So I, I can't even speak French. Caveman? I'm barely speaking English, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you just do like grunts and, and uh. Yeah. So I do. Yeah, I'm gonna start trying to write in another language and just piece together some words and phrases and see how that works. <laughs> hopefully, you won't offend anyone. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Well, I'll try. I'll try some language that represents a, a large market. At least. That's true. So. <laughs> it's usually the case when you learn another language. Like, what are the swear words? I want to swear words first. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Exactly. All the rude stuff. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, where's the washroom and how do I order a beer? Yeah. And that. <laughs> Right, that, there's a song right there because one follows the other, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mike. So, uh, yes. Okay, uh, so I'll be quick with this. But I was a toss up between uh, like there's some mod like there's a, a Canadian artist Tanya Tagic who is an Inuit and does throat singing and does music in another language and it's it's otherworldly. It's fantastic. Uh, the uh, was it animism, which was a Polaris shortlist or Polaris nominee, was like just fantastic. But I thought I'd wrap it up with the first song I can remember of another language that uh, kind of struck me uh, back in the new wave days of Nuts and Bolts and Domino mm -hmm. Club in Toronto, mm -hmm. and there was this band or this song uh, by Plastic Bertrand. Uh, and it came out, and that's the first one I heard. It also came out in English as Jet Boy, Jet Girl with Elton Motello. And it oh. turns out, neither 
neither of them actually did the song. It was someone else who just, well, I think Elton Motello might have sung it, but the track, the song was written by someone else. And uh, Plastique Bertrand was just a, like a, a French DJ. He didn't even sing it. He just mined it, but it became a big hit. <laughs> it was a, a pretty big hit for him. Well, He was just fronting it. And he did all like the top of the pops and all these sort of things where he just mined it. But uh, uh, yeah, it was... Uh, Anyway, so this, let's take a listen. This is a uh, plan pour moi, which I have no idea what that means either because I barely speak English. <laughs> it's a big issue. Wow. Sur mon lit à bouffer sa langue en buvant Prends mon whisky quant à moi un peu dormi Vie débris mais j'ai dû dormir dans la gouttière Où j'ai eu un flash Ouh En quatre couleurs Allez hop un matin Une louloute est venue chez moi Poupée de cellophane, cheveux chinois Un sparadra, une gueule de bois A bu ma bière dans un grand verre en caoutchouc Way too many words. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, do you know if um, the lyrics uh, between this and the English, are they the same lyrics? No, because they... Jet Boy, Jet Girl is a little kind of rude and, mm. you know, yeah. she gives me head and that kind of stuff. This uh, is different. But, uh, yeah, there was, um, yeah, they, I don't know, because it had already been sung by the uh, composer, Lou Deprigic. Uh and so they just had him. I guess because he was a popular guy, this guy Classique Bertrand, who I think his real name is uh, uh, Robert um, Jouet. Jouet. Anyway, I guess he was he was a famous face, so they got him to put his face to it, and it became successful that way. But he had already recorded with a guy Elton Motello, which is a stage name. Who wrote, who wrote the English lyrics for the same track. So the two never crossed over. Mm. Uh, so the, the two songs are completely different. And it's a really simple song, right? But it's great. <laughs> it's really fun. But One of the things really that was mm. really interesting for, for those of you young people who didn't live through the uh, New Wave days mm -hmm. is that dancing was a huge part of it. And a lot of the music yeah. was really, really dancey. Mm. And... Um, the girl I was going out with um, at the time, when, you know, the tragically hip and that, you know, the kind of grunge stuff, she said, you can't dance to any of this stuff. Mm. It's all mm -hmm. kind of plodding and kind of blah, blah. And it's true, whereas all that stuff, you know, from, from the 80s was all dancing. And when you heard it through, like, these huge club uh, sound systems blaring, it was just fantastic. Oh, yeah. You know? You would dance the whole, like, the whole night away and, and there'd be all these crazy simple songs and and a weird mix of stuff too like this yeah. and there'd be kind of really disco-y stuff and and gothic stuff like mm -hmm. kiss kiss bang bang and oh yeah you know. <laughs> Yeah, uh, electro pop and all that sort of stuff, and, and that's uh, why that's why sort of in the Legosi's dead. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why in the sort of nineties, like eighties to nineties. That's that's when you had that divergence between the grunge and then EDM and and yeah. uh, all that other stuff that would that filled up the clubs, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they weren't playing Nirvana in the in the dance halls, I don't think. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. So, um, so right, for my we, final yeah. one is uh, there's yeah, yeah. of course now tons that I thought of mm -hmm. since we've been talking about this. Um, I was going to do Falco de Commerçant because mm. that was a huge one. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But another one which I've always loved and it's so simple. Um, and so odd, and yet it became a huge hit. And I think that's why it's, you know, I've always, I've always loved music like Devo and, and Wall of Voodoo and stuff that was always a little bit mm -hmm. off. And this was a band that was, you know, a little bit different and had a bunch of hits, I think, in Europe. Um, but this one is by a band called Trio, a German band. And oh, yeah. um, da, the song da, is called Da Da Da. da, da. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mit dem mein Schatz. Aha. 
geht es immer nur bergab, aha, geht nur das, was du verstehst, aha, this is what you got to know, let me go, it didn't show, ich liebe dich nicht, du liebst mich nicht, 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 da, da, da. What is that riff? That's from something else, right? Da, 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 da. I think it's from um, like La Bamba or something. Da, 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 da. Yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah. But it's also yeah, um, he he features the Casio mm -hmm. S one hundred one. It's like a little calcul calculator keyboard that they put mm -hmm. out. Casio always put out these really yeah, cool about that big, right? yeah. What 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 year was this from, Phil? Because that was a total yeah. trip down memory lane. Like, oh my god, I haven't heard that song since it came out. Uh, nineteen eighty something. Yeah, definitely like nineteen eighty, seventy nine eighty. I think. Wow, that was that was kind of trippy. As soon as you, as soon as you hit it, it was like holy crap. But it's interesting how a simple song can become so catchy just because mm -hmm. it's so unique you know yeah um, 1982 82 yep Jeez. Yes, uh, sir. good fun stuff so that's yeah, all over the radio mine. <laughs> wow okay um okay so my last pick uh for this show is going to be um an artist i don't remember how i heard of this artist um azam ali who's a singer um, there's an interesting article I found today. Actually, we'll put it in the in the show notes uh, called uh, uh, "Azam Ali's Magnificent Vocal Journeys Through Languages." Because I don't know what language this song is in. Um, she was born in Tehran, in Iran, and moved to India at the age of four. And she sings in. Let's see, where's the list of the list of languages here? Uh, sorry, guys. You got to do your oh, yeah. research ahead of time. Yeah, no, it, it was on the page. Okay, so it's more exciting this way. Yes, yes, it is. The suspense is killing you, isn't it? Um, so the podcast. How many languages? <laughs> How many? Take a guess. So she sings in Persian, Turkish, Arabic, Ladino, English, Latin, and a fictional language called Fremen. Like, but not Urdu. Like you've heard of it? Disappointed. Oh, no, no. Not <laughs> no. Like, not did, you, did you invent your own language? I don't know. But it's it's also got like this kind of really electronic um element as well. And she's got a stunning voice. Um, so she's been all over the world. She's won Juno Awards, apparently, um, according to her website. So yeah. Um, Great. Let's, let's... Azam Ali abode.
It takes a fairly stuff. long track. It does get a lot more yeah. intense <laughs> as, it, Rem- as it goes. Reminds on. me a bit of uh, Afra Hazza. Oh okay. yeah, so, so, that. Israeli singer. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I found it, a just YouTube. Being, her voice is same, and, and the production that kind of really reverb voice on it. Yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah. A really I actually cool found track. a YouTube video today where someone uh, subtitled the um, English translation of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, neat. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. You know, it's um, this is also a great thing if you're if you ever uh, suffer from writer's block, um, which happens mm-hmm. to everyone. That, in my opinion, is because your brain you you've exhausted all the stuff that's in your brain. So it's a great way of getting some new things into your brain. So it's great to listen to all this music in yeah. different languages using different musical styles and modes, but it's much better if you take one of those songs and actually figure out what the melodies are mm-hmm. and what the chords are, because that will actually give you some more um, some more material to kind of um, to, to work from. And it'll help mm-hmm. you generate new ideas that you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, and it's just, you know, it's just, you have to keep on, as an artist, you need to fill your head with stuff so that you can resynthesize it and spit it out in your own unique way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wise words. Yeah. And, yeah, and that really is the takeaway. Spit it out. Yeah. And that really is the takeaway for, for songwriters um, to like, yeah, like you say, like try to vary, vary the palette as much as you can and study it is, is, the, other, is yes. the other key point, right? There's one thing to passively listen to it, but to actually dissect it. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, like I, I've, I've had this, you know, as I'm Ali CD for years, I've never actually studied it. I'm just like listening to it. Yeah. But, um, maybe it's, it's worth, it's worth the effort. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking about how she sings in, you know, multiple languages. When you meet people from, from, you know, the Middle East and in Europe, they all speak like 10 languages. Like yeah. it's like, it's not on you. Like it's not something they know because it's just like, well, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and they're sort of going like, "What do you mean you only speak one language? Mm-hmm. You dropped as a kid. How do you get by? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, when all those borders are that much closer together here in Canada, it's like yeah, yeah thousands exactly. of miles before you reach a place. Well, Quebec. That's <laughs> <Yeah, it's> true. <laughs> where they speak a different language. And that is sorry, Quebec. <laughs> I don't know. It seems like they got a different word for everything myself. But. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the songs that um, we didn't get to that we all love? Yeah. Mike, you go first. Um, well, I, I already listed uh, Tanya Target and um, okay, and, uh, and Offer Has It, but I, I listened to that whole album and there's really, you know, I like her voice and I love uh, the the artist you just played, Neil, because I really like Middle Eastern scales mm. with kind of Western rhythms and, and, mm-hmm. uh, and instrumentation. Yeah. So there's uh, some other artists like that. Mm. Um, and there was a few that just I had on my, the tip of my tongue and I would forgotten. Uh, there's a, a, back in the early days of rap, there was a French rapper called MC Solar, oh. who was really good. And uh, then a, also a French band called Young Lions, who had a great kind of heavy track called Pamal. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> this really growly voice that's quite cool. Okay. How about you, Phil? Uh, well, of course, uh, Nina, 99 Luftballons, which was yep. a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it works better in German than it does in English. Um, mm. Which the ages. Yeah, which it makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, of course, there's... Um, to Kill Messiah by Falco, which has a, um, of course, the German version and then a very accented English version, mm-hmm. which um, is kind of cool. Of course, he did Rock Me Amadeus, I think, in English and uh, German as well. Mm-hmm. And um, that's all I have off the top of my head. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, there's just tons of them. Yeah, I had the um, I had the Nine Nine Lift Balloons as well. I, I do admit I, I'm probably more familiar with the English version because I think they played it more on the radio in Canada, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Probably, but yeah, the German yeah. version is is pretty cool. And and um, as I recall, the only reason I picked that put that one on the list is I recall when it came out, I was a kid, and that was like the first instance of like a a, a cross border hit 
Um, but when you played that da 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 song, that might have been the first one I heard <laughs> in a different language. So now I'm wondering. Um, and the other one I had um, was a French Canadian band called um, Anne Victor, um, which was pretty cool. I actually saw them perform um, when I was in university. And uh, they got this kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of Parisian thing, jazz. Uh, it's really, it's really more poppy jazz um, stuff going on and, and all French. So, yeah, Quebecois. And speaking of uh, Canadian French stuff, of course, The Box, who did a yes. bunch of uh, stuff in French as well. Yeah, and yeah. they are so good. They're one yeah. of those bands going, why weren't they bigger? They were so mm. unique, you know? Yeah, they had a few big hits in the 80s. Um, yeah, great stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Closer together, right? That was their hit? Yeah. Yes. Which was in English. <laughs> that's true. Okay, that's about all the time we have on Song Talk Radio tonight. Special thanks to all the songs out there that are not in English. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we want to hear from you, so send us your comments on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram through at Song Talk Radio, or send us an email at feedback at songtalk.ca in whatever language you have, because we have Google to translate everything for us, where it'll be fine. Um, also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. Now there are all these virtual boxes. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter at songtalk.ca. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page on the website. And wherever you are in the world, please join us online via Zoom at our next monthly Song Talk meetup. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. You can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil... At Phil, uh, thephilemory.ca. Yeah. And Philemory.ca. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Proudfoot420. Excellent. Thank you for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Stay safe and keep on writing, everyone. Keep on writing. Or as they say in French, keep on writing, but they use French words. So that's what it is. And I'll turn back to Maintenant. Uh, Three on court. <laughs>